Okay, so um, as I said, I go back to where I stopped last time, and it is uh, really the end of the of the short story, the lottery ticket. And here we see, uh, you know, um, at uh, the uh, question, as I said, the really the main important question, which is the daydreaming. Really, the whole idea in this in this short story is about this psycho analytical psychological impact uh, on people and i think this is really an important thing to to discover and to uh, really to see throughout this story as i said to you when he was really suddenly amazingly changed man totally uh, although we felt at the beginning that he was a very nice man you know helpless sort of you know, easygoing, relaxed man, but um, you know, at the end, uh, we find him really absolutely changed in so many ways uh, about you know the situation of uh, uh, wanting to uh, to uh, marry again and not to really uh, you know uh, care about his wife and all this carry on, which is really it's very funny. I mean, really, it's very funny and ironical and. And really very comical. And I think, as I said to you last time, really Chekhov is an amazing figure uh, here in this, uh, in this area where he is in a, an amazing fashion. He is criticizing yet laughing and mocking society in general. Notice here when he said, and he looked at his wife, not with a smile now, but with hatred. She glanced at him too and also with hatred and anger. Maybe if I again, uh, you know, um, uh, add a little bit, um, um, where is it, how can I? Yeah. She has her own. You see, of course, uh, you see my screen? Hello? Do you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, very good. So notice here, you know, the irony really, you know, that she also has her own dreams. She also had her own daydreams, right? And she knew what he was thinking. She knew his ideas and his terrible plans, you know? So she would not, she would not let him, you know? Notice here, it's very nice making daydreams at other people's expense is what her eyes expressed. No, don't you dare, you know? She, she really... As if to say to him, no, you will never be able to do that. Don't you dare, you know, do this marry in, you know, with my own money. I will never let you. You know, her husband understood her look. Hatred began staring again in his breast. And look at this hatred. <laughs> Why? You know, it's, it's really it's a, a funny, absolutely funny thing. Uh, you know, to be uh, at the end of this, to be to hate her. What did she do? Hatred began staring again in his breast. And in order to annoy his wife, he glanced quickly to spite her at the fourth page on the newspaper and read out triumphantly. <laughs> what? Why triumphantly? You know, he read in a very triumphant voice. What a shame. 
and he said series 9499 number 46 not 26 mm. you know <laughs> and this is really the funny thing hatred and hope both disappeared at once and it began immediately to seem to Ivan Dimitrich and his wife that their rooms were dark and small and low pitched, that the supper they had been eating was not doing them good, but lying heavily on their stomachs. But the evenings were long and wearisome. What do you think? You know, this is really amazing. I mean, this really conclusion here is absolutely lovely. You can see here, yes, they were dreaming and all this, the hope of winning and all that. So suddenly when he read that this is, the number is 46, not 26, you know, notice here the shock. But of course, the realization, the absolute realization that they have, uh, you know, funny, both of them in a way, mainly the man. He has so terrible ideas, so terrible thoughts and things about his wife that if he had the chance, he would kick her away and marry again. You know, this is the idea. So that's why here we say both hatred and hope disappeared immediately. And now they came back to reality. The reality is they are sitting here in this room, which is really miserable, small room. And it originally, at the beginning, it was a good house, you know, normal, nice house. And he was sitting relaxed and reading the newspaper in, an, in a happy way. And he, she was in the kitchen doing the kitchen work. Again, she is a very happy uh, wife. And now everything totally changed. Now to them, the rooms seem to be dark and miserable and black and small and again low pitched as if to say nearly dead and even the food they had eaten the food they had eaten is now he says you know is terrible is not really good on, into their stomachs and even the say you know the whole evening seemed to be deadly and absolutely as he said wearisome meaning absolutely uh, you know um, difficult to uh, to withstand so he wants to get rid of all this terrible feeling. What the devil is the meaning of it? Said Ivan Dimitrich. Again, here he is absolutely changed. And here what we call, for example, sometimes, you know, the, the uh, really um, what we say about the round character, the round character, or, or as I said, you know, um, it, of course, opposite to or the developing character. The man here, we see him totally different from the beginning. Now he looks terrible and he looks angry. He is not happy and he wants to, you know, to fight with his wife for no reason. Said Ivan Dimitrich, beginning to be ill-humored. Wherever one steps, there are bits of paper under one's feet, crumbs, husks. So you see, now he's complaining about the house. He said, wherever you move, there are dirty, filthy things everywhere. You know, he said, bits, bits of paper, bits. You know, he said, crumbs and husks. You know, as if to say the whole house is filthy. You terrible wife, you are not doing your job. The rooms are never swept. Oh, really? <laughs> You see here again, he's saying, this house is filthy. I can't, I can't stay in this house anymore. I am going to leave this house. One is simply forced to go out. Damnation take my soul entirely. I shall go and hang myself on the first aspen tree. Allah le Ma'as-salamu. Ha. Do you agree with me? Yes. Yes. Do you say um, um, go to hell? Who, who cares? 
Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of chat here. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, he wants to commit suicide. He wants to hang himself. He hates the house. He hates the wife. He's complaining about everything. And he said, I want to go. I can't bear this house anymore. I'm sick of this. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Now you are a man. Yeah, we see you. You are a man now. <laughs> which is really, which is really very funny. So really, the, 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 um, the story here is amazing. And I think, you know, it's absolutely lovely. Our friend, uh, you know, Chikov, I think in this, uh, in this short story is a master, absolutely master. He, you know, um, he did it in a very dramatic way, in a very, you know, uh, sharp way, in very ironical way. It's really, uh, he, he took us deeper into their brains, into their minds, how they think, how they started to, as I said, daydreaming. And, you know, to, to always think in a, in a stupid, uh, crazy manner, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, it's... He hated everything by making things in his mind, by uh, in imagining some sceneries, and then he hated the wife, his house, and tried, uh, I wanted to suicide. <laughs> Usually yeah. women do that. Oh. Oh, oh Fayyad, no. did you, what did you say? Usually so, not. Just, just a minute. Fayyad, what did you say? She I said, him. Yeah? I said, usually women do that. Uh, they dream and... You mean uh, women make, run away? Yeah. Yeah, make uh, a fake Is that scenario what in their head. What, Tikto? Like, in Qatar. Yeah, I think there's, yeah. No, I'm back again. Fayad, you were saying that uh, maybe women will run away? Uh, I said that usually women uh, make fake scenario in their head and get angry and moody about it. <laughs> Thank you, Fayad. Yes. <laughs> okay, Fayad. Huh? What? Women are the most patient creatures in the world. Oh my God, Fatima! Yeah, 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 Fatima. I think Fatima. Yeah, yeah. I think women are really tolerant, and they bear a lot of problems. And we men, <laughs> it's really funny thing here. Say the accusation to see women do it, and and you know. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think I think here the man is, as you see, the story really is getting at the man, is saying the man, you know, went he went mad and he his head snapped. There's something in his mind really snapped, which is, you know, he had, you know, as if he went crazy. And I think this is the idea, and this is the funny thing. Well, you know, sometimes people, you may say, we can't really say women do that generally they do do this or men they do this as Hafsa said stereotypes yeah I agree with you we really can't we really oh she said <laughs> Salma said oh oh no old man do that what do you mean old man or old men <laughs> say old man's old men Salma Salma? I mean, old men's dreaming a lot and they go through hopes and so on. Only old ones? You mean the young ones are okay? No, I maybe she means that, please. What did she mean? I, maybe I did not understand her. What do you, yeah? More, more comments? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, I see. You mean they, they go, you know, like uh, what we say, daughtery, you know, like, like <laughs> they become childish again. Ah, mm. 
No, no, really, no. I don't believe it. I mean, I don't agree with you. I don't know. But really, this is the idea. I mean, people sometimes, people sometimes, uh, and Maha wanted to say something, Maha? Yes, doctor. Uh, I just want to say that both, uh, all a human, I think, can, uh, can dream. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think. Just, just men yeah? who are dreaming or, or just uh, the ladies. So <laughs> I think we are, all, we, we all are dreaming all the time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. You know, it's really the writer here is talking about all of us, really about people in general. But the idea of saying that the writer here focused more on the man to say he went even crazy and he lost his mind and he lost his patience and he couldn't understand it and he could tolerate it. You know, sometimes when you are living with your wife or people only, for example, here, you know, you, you fight with the person you, you, you see in front of you. And here the man, you know, lost his senses and he lost his, you know, patience and he lost his mind and he lost his wisdom. And he started to behave like a, like a child, really, like a crazy, uh, maybe wild man to say, I've had enough. I can't tolerate this and I want to go out and I want to leave this place and I want to this area and I hate you and I hate this house, blah, 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 blah. And I want to go out and commit suicide or kill myself. Of course, we don't believe him. We don't believe him. Really, the, the writer here is just emphasizing this to really mock him and to laugh at him. Really to mock him and say, ha, you crazy man, come on, come down and come back. Maybe his wife, I mean, the novel, the story is stopped here. I think the wife would tell him, hey, grow up, young man, come back. You know, I think his wife should tell him this, Ya Basmala, isn't it? Yes, doctor, and I have a question. Yeah. So you say that uh, the husband is a changing uh, and round character. Uh, is his wife also? Round. Sorry? You say that the husband is a developed, developing and changing character and round also. Yes. Also his wife? Not really. His wife remained as she was, calm, quiet, in the same way. She did not change much. She, she started this, the story in the same fashion. She is realistic and she remained realistic a little bit. And she knew how to calm him down. And she was always trying to drag him back to reality and to tell him, come on, stop dreaming. But he would not listen. So really, his wife is, is positive. I'm not saying static means she is not good. I'm not saying static or fixed character is not good. I'm saying the shocking change in the character. The wife did not shock us, but, but the husband shocked us by changing and becoming a crazy man who wants to go and kill himself. I mean, this is unbelievable. We can't believe him, right? So really, this is the idea I'm saying in contrast to the wife, the wife, she remained calm and, you know, reasonable. She knew what was going on, but still she was really reasonable and I think, uh, you know, wise enough. So that's why I say, yes, he was developing and drowned because he shocked us at the end of the story, whereas his wife stayed all the time as in the same position and the same thing as a quiet, uh, you know, in a way, sensible, sensible wife. Uh, also, doctor, uh, I think, uh, I think that uh, the man was uh, at the beginning was uh, very satisfied uh, by his life. Exactly. Yes. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning, we saw him in the first sentence. We said he was very happy, enjoying the food and everything was fine and he was relaxed and sitting on his sofa and wants to read the newspaper means he is absolutely happy and, and satisfied. And, and at the end, he was totally, 
you know, worked up and total in, in total opposition to this feeling. You know, he was restless, he was angry, he was mad, he was sick, and he wanted to go out, as I said, to kill himself. So this is absolutely drastic changes, and that's what that's what uh, I think uh, we mean by I mean by the change, the absolute strong change in his position and so, his, yeah, doctor, in... the Rahma, story yes? show, yeah sorry um, this story shows that the uh, one who was satisfied uh, is the wife not the man at the end <laughs> yes i i agree with you to some extent the wife is realistic in in to some extent she has her own dreams she bought the ticket she thought that in case she wins, but you know, she was always realistic and she was always happy with what she is. But you know, she was planning and hoping that she would win. But at the end of the day, when she did not lose, she did not lose her mind. You know, yes, I think she is more realistic. And, and as I said, you know, she is, she is sensible. She is here, the sensible one, the wise one. And that's why maybe I said to you, I'm saying to you, if I ask you, uh, yeah, Basmala and everybody else, boys and girls here in class today. If I say to you, can you write, uh, can you, can you uh, add another paragraph to this story? Can you change, can you give me another conclusion? Or to add maybe one paragraph or two, three, four, five, maybe ten sentences to conclude this, to see what the wife would say to him? When he said, I'm going out. And the house is very clean, uh, it's, it's very dirty, and everywhere I can see crumbs, everything is husky, everything, the house is, is, is terrible, dirty, you never sweep. What do you think his wife would tell him? Basmala. Before I answer the question, I have a question. <laughs> so, did she really win or not? I didn't <laughs> understand. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear me? You said no, yeah. not really. What did you say? Did she really what again, please? Did did she really win? One, it's not win. You mean, uh, did she win the, lottery, the money? I mean, yeah. The lottery. No, no, no. No, you can see the number is 46 instead of 26. So she did not. So why he tricked her at the beginning? Well, <laughs> you know, this is the story. Oh, he you know? read the number. Uh, yani he didn't read the number carefully. Uh, he no, no, he never read the number. By the way, he doesn't know. He did, need, he did not read the number. He said, we will read it later. The, he is not wicked uh, to hide the number. No, he did not read the number. He said, let's live in the moment for a while about dreaming and think that we have won. Let's imagine that we have won and let's live in the moment of being a winner, you know, being winners. So he doesn't know, really. So at the end, uh, he was happy that they have not won because he said his wife would do this and this and this and this to him. So really, the idea really here, that's the meaning of the story. The, re the reaction, of course, you know, is, is, is very interesting. And I think, you know, I like your comments you were, when you're saying here. You know, I think she would... She would um, um, <laughs> yeah, well, I think open ended. Yes, we can. Again, uh, maybe she will. Oh, Marwa, she said, maybe she will kill him. No, no, Marwa, no, no, she will not. And he went outside and hanged himself. I see. She could ask him to calm down, calm down, you old man. Oh, yeah, Saeed, I think. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> Saeed. Um, تعالي يا ابني ارجع ارجع يا ولد ارجع يا ولد يا ولد ارجع ارجع يا حبيبي تعال تعال يا حبيبي تعال it's ها? better to let him die oh no come on no 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 we don't want to kill people here 
We want to teach people she lessons. She will be shocked. Re Sorry? She will be shocked because he was only daydreaming and suddenly he is another man. So she would, would be shocked why he's, he changed. Yeah, she will be shocked. Yes, I agree with you. She is shocked. She is totally shocked. And she would calm him down and say, come on. As you say, as Said said, come on, old man, calm down. And there's nothing, you know. And people, of course, would, would excuse each other, would, would, would forgive each other. And, you know... Um, uh, I think she will ignore him until he comes down by himself. Yeah, very good, Fatma. I think, yes. I think you will be a good wife later. I think that's true. That's true. Really, really, she will, she will, um, she will wait and he will come down and she will laugh at him for a while. It's because, you know, people sometimes get, get, get excited about things and uh, the idea that, that people should be tolerant, people should be tolerant and should understand each other. And then after a while, they calm down and things as if nothing happened. But you see, the story, really, this is the idea here about how, how the whole thing... <laughs> um, Maybe after hanging himself, she will go and discover that she really won the lottery. So he died and get what he deserved, and she lived a very class. happy life with money. The class. The class. I love you it. Have, you are an amazing writer. Come on. Go on. <laughs> That's it. She lived a very happy life with money. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a funny, yeah. You see, it's, a, it's really a funny conclusion here. If you add your own conclusion here to, to, to add up to the story, really, it's an amazing thing, you know. It depends how you want to build it up again and again and see. But I think this is a lovely story. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we've had enough about it. Any question about that? So before I move to the next one, any question? No question, sir. Doctor, it is yeah. an open-ending story, right? Oh, yeah, of course. You can see that. Yeah, it's an open-ended... Yeah, it's an open, really, yeah, an open-ended um, story, yes. Um, because what is the, the theme? Sorry. Oh, the theme. Oh, uh, what the do theme. You think? Yeah. What is the main theme? You think? Daydreaming. Yeah, daydreaming. Uh, that yeah, day people are not what they show they are. Again, Fayad. Again. That people, uh, they are not what they show show you. They are like uh, they are different people inside. I don't oh, know you mean pretense and double and double facedness and people? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody said uh, Hafsa said daydreaming. Hayat said the psychological impact of the money of money. Yes, Salma said hoping. Yeah, I think these uh, are all optional, optional themes. I agree with you, really. But the idea, really, the main question is the effect of daydreaming. To say, positively speaking, to look at hopes and daydreaming in a, in a positive way, in a nice way, in an easy way, in a relatively acceptable way, yes. It's good to dream, but not to fly too much with your dreams. Not to let yourself, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, to fly far, far away from reality. Because if you do that, then you will be shocked and then you will fall miserably. And I think that's the idea, uh, the question, I, I think the story here about, you know, the daydreaming. And to say again, the, again, the question here of daydreaming is, strongly, terribly, strongly connected to what we say about uh, psychoanalysis, you know, how our minds work, how our, you know, uh, inner, inner minds and our crazy, 
sort of uh, minds. Um, in a way, I say crazy, I mean sometimes um, sometimes um, the, the, the situation will be um, unacceptable, really, uh, about, about um, uh, how people sometimes uh, behave and dream and, and so on. So the, the idea, I think, uh, is uh, very interesting and the story is full of really lovely, <clears throat> lovely uh, ideas and thoughts that you can enlarge and develop um, all these uh, things in, in so many ways, really. But as I said, really, the focus here, the focus is maybe about maybe let's say 65 percent on the man or 75 percent on the man to study his psychology more and to see the question of how men think and the domination they want and the control that they want and this man here maybe is having a problem of how to control his wife because he was always saying he will not she will not give me money and all this you know the idea here the question as I said to you, the family relationship, how you think of your family, and really the idea of family is, is the question of sharing. You know, families share. Wives and husbands share things. You know, we don't say your money and my money and his money and her money. When you are married to, to your husband, your money is his money and his money is your money. So really there's nothing... We don't have here banks and every one of us ha has his own and so on. I think this is the idea here, uh, the question here of family sharing. This is the idea, family sharing. It's the same thing like what we said in Jibran, Khalil Jibran. Remember his story, what, what I told you, you know, you share things, but you give a little bit of space to your, to your partner. And I think this is the uh, whole idea in the story. It's a lovely story, as you can see, uh, by Anton Chikov. Now, the next story, uh, yeah, any question before I move? Questions? No. No, thank you, doctor. Okay, good. Now, uh, the next story is, is um, I keep, uh, I keep uh, putting these ACs on and off all the time. And I think the weather now is getting really lovely here in Muscat. I don't know where you are, but it's getting really nice. Um, the story here by Edgar Allan Poe is an amazing short story, ladies and gentlemen. Edgar Allan Poe is a great master of the short story. In fact, for many, many critics, uh, they, they really, mostly American critics, mostly American critics, they really think that um, Edgar Allan Poe is the father of the modern short story. And I think I, I agree with them because really he is a great man in every sense, you know, um, because also he gave a lot of theoretical uh, writings and he studied, he gave a lot of uh, criticism about the makings of literature, the how literature should be done. Um, mainly, I think, the short story and poetry. And I think he was... To me, he was the, a master of the short story. And Anton Chekhov, of course, he was writing after him. And the other main, other big uh, theorists or who uh, wrote about the short story, really, really, they owe a lot to our friend Edgar Allan Poe. I, I, I like him. He's such a great man, really, in every sense. Although some people may say, well, his, um, his stories are full of, uh, you know, difficult things and crazy things and, you know, um, a lot of horror and a lot of gothic and a lot of terror and so on. Yes, I agree with you. But you see, um, those elements about, uh, about him really 
um, you know, enrich his, his literature. His stories are very, 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 very much about, again, the question of, of psychology, really psychology, absolutely psychological. Everything he writes is to do with his own, really, um, the exact feelings, because a lot of what happened to him in reality really affected his own life. You know, if I, if you, if you Google his name uh, in the net, you will find hundreds and hundreds of references and books written on Edgar Allan Poe. And I think most of the stories. Did I read any poem for you by Edgar Allan Poe? No. Well, next term, if you are with me in literature too. I will read for you a lovely poem, but I don't know. In case I don't see you in the next term, inshallah, I will see you. Um, uh, there is a lovely, absolutely lovely poem called Annabelle Lee. Do you know it? No, Doctor. Annabelle Lee. Anybody know? Anybody knows it? No. I hate English poems. Oh, Basmala. Basmala. Why? They are not interesting like Arabic. Oh, no, no. Let me, let me show you this. I think they are free of emotions. No, wait a minute. I will read this for you by, by Edgar Allan Poe. And after this poem, you tell me what you think of English poetry. Just a minute, just a minute. By the way, many, many of my students who were with me in these courses, at the end of the day, they said, Doctor, you have changed my mind about literature. Many, many of my students said this. And if you don't feel it, don't say it. But, but really, many of them told me, and they came to me, and they switched, believe it or not, they switched from education to the arts. Wow. <laughs> you know, well, uh, two, two, three of them, they did that. And, and really, let me show you my example about uh, my friend uh, Edgar Allan Poe, a lovely poem. It's called, it's called, let me, uh, let me, yeah, it's here. I'll share it with you and I will show you this. I um, I teach. Um, oh no, this is not the one. Sorry. Uh, I teach this to my. Um, to uh, to my students in uh, in literature too. Introduction to literature too, and I gave this uh, short story. Uh, this poem because the in, literature too is about poetry. This one, um, this one I'm giving you is prose. And the next one is to drama and poetry. And look at this poem here by, by, by Edgar Allan Poe. Let me share this and I will show you, I will show you that here uh, to share it with you. I will show you the poem. Right, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. This is Edgar Allan Poe. As you can see, born 1809, died 1849. He's such, as I said, notice here, I give a little, a little introduction about him. Edgar Allan Poe is an American poet, short story writer and critic, who is acknowledged today as one of the most brilliant and original writers in American literature. And, you know, I go on here about, how, about his, you know, achievements, about, about really the, his skills in, in, in writing. I say he his skillfully uh, written tales and poems convey with passionate intensity the mysterious dreamlike and often macabre. Again here, macabre, which is really like those horror and, uh, you know, the frightening terror fiction macabre forces that pervaded the sensi his sensibil sen sensibility. He's also considered as the father of the modern detective story. You see, the detective fiction 
he is also the father of that and um you know this poem here he wrote a great poem here i give this i will give you this inshallah next term if you are with me in literature too i'll give you two examples the raven the raven and annabelle lee look at this look at this uh, uh, poem here called annabelle lee it's really a story about a lost he was in love with a young lady and this young lady um you know they took her away from him and she died she her family imprisoned her uh, near the sea and they she died in prison and originally she died because of him because they were they were outside during a cold weather and she caught um, you know she became really uh, she caught a cold and she died out of you know as a result of that so notice here um, Annabelle Lee um, what um, what he's saying oh sorry where 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 was where is it yeah notice annabelle lee can you see my screen do you want me to make it a bit uh, larger can you see it we can see it hello yeah, yeah. It was many, it was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Look at the rhyme here. Look at the rhyme. Ago, no, see, Lee. And again here, thought and me. So the, 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 the poem here is absolutely lovely and as if it's written like in Arabic, you know, because each line is written, uh, you know, as a long line, but it's separated like that. So it was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden, she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love. I and my Annabelle Lee. With a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee. So that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, and as all men knew in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon, for the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in the sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the mouth sounding sea. Wow. Finished. I mean, the language is simple, I, I, I hope. <laughs> I'll explain this to you maybe later. But you see, look at this. 
it's a lovely, absolutely lovely, the poem, the rhyme, and so on. I mean, I'm not going to explain to you now because really this is not the time for that. But think about it and, and, and look at the, really look at the amazing uh, passion and feeling that he has. Um, this poem and the other poem is about the feeling of loss. The loss. The, the effect of the loss. The dead. The raven is about the same thing. Edgar Allan Poe in real life, really, he himself was, was killed in a fight um, because he was such a wild man, as you can see. Really, he was, he was dead, as you can see, only 40 years old. And the story here, the, the telltale heart, is, is an amazing uh, short story uh, about this, uh, you know, extreme sensitivity that he's talking about. The idea, really, the story here, ladies, is about a man who killed his neighbor for strange reason, absolutely strange reason. And Edgar Allan Poe's stories, as I said, they are full of those strange, horrifying horror things to kill someone for no reason. Why? Why? The only thing here that this narrator in the story, as you can see, the story, our story is only, um, is only, as you can see, only three pages. But again, it's really an amazing psychoanalytical story. This, the, the, the narrator character here, we have a narrator character who's telling us all the time that I killed this man, but I'm not crazy. I'm telling you why I killed this man, but I'm not crazy, you know? And he, he's always trying to make us forgive him and to understand his situation and to believe him and to accept him. But really, we don't. I don't. So the, this short story is an absolutely, again, uh, deeply, deeply psychoanalytical criticism psychoanalytical analysis of what this man is thinking the really the problem is in his mind really the 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 situation and the problem is in his in his mind and he will never be cured by this crazy thing which is as we say over sensitivity the extreme sensitivity and when you are over sensitive about things when you become like crazy about, you know, whether you are really, it becomes like phobia. When you are, you know, pho you, know um, you feel about anything and you are in the extreme feeling about, about anything, it becomes like a disease, like a psychological disease. It becomes really, really like a problem. You know, like, for example, if you... You know, you open the door and then you shut it and then you close it and then you open it again and you see maybe did you lock it? And then you come back again and open the door and you say, did I lock my door? And then you go back again and again and again and to double check. Because here you become really as if you are really not, not you know, not real. And sometimes when you, when you are over, 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 you know, uh, sensitive about cleaning, for example, you know, you clean your hands once, twice, three times, ten times. How many times? How many times? You know? So this question of extreme, extreme sensitivity becomes like a disease. And really his, his novel here, um, this short story, and many of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's short stories are to do with this extra feeling, this extra sense or extreme sense, or extreme, if you like, as I say, really weird, uh, crazy um, sensitivity, which is not, at the end of the day, it becomes not sensitivity. It becomes crazy thing. When you are really doing things, um, you know, in an, in an unbelievable way, right? And here, our friend in this story, his neighbor, he said he has an eye, 
and one eye, and again, really, this is crazy, and this is funny, that somebody has one eye. And he said, his eye is a big, he has a big eye. It's a blue eye, he said, and I want to, and he said, this eye frightens me. And he said, I hate his eye. So he killed him because of his eye. MashaAllah. Do you understand? Yes, doctor. I mean, we can't go on killing people because we don't like them. We can't go on killing people with, because we don't like them. You don't like someone, but you don't kill them, for God's sake. Huh? Yeah. Again, especially, especially, you know, that person never, never, never did anything wrong to you. How can you kill someone just like that, out of the blue? How can you kill someone out of the blue for no reason? For no reason. Right? So here, really, the story is about this absolutely problem. And the title you can say, the telltale heart, means the heart which is telling the story. The heart which is telling the tale. Beating because he killed the man, and the heart of the man because he thought that his heart or the heart of this man, uh, he thought that is not dead. And the police and everybody thought, he thought that, that, that they heard the beating of the heart. And that's why we say here that the heart is telling this story. And that's why he said the telltale heart. You know, the telltale heart or the heart which is telling the story really here is the whole idea here. Look at this. Uh, 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 a quotation here um, um, for God was long felt. Art is long and time is fleeting, and our hearts, though stout and brave, still like muffled drums are beating. Funeral marches, funeral marches to the grave. So, you know, the quotation here really is to do with uh, sometimes hearts don't die. Hearts don't die. You know, they, they go on. And really, this is the idea about funeral marches. Funeral marches to the grave. Of course, this is poetry. And, and this is written by, by Henry, Henry Longfellow, another American poet. And Edgar Allan Poe is using him just to say about the idea of the heart, because that's what, uh, that's what he's saying here. And uh, really doctor, this, yes. Uh, should we memorize the the author's names and uh, what they wrote and just like that? You mean uh, the 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 authors? Uh, you mean the title of the stories and the writers? Yeah. Of course. Of course, you have to say this is Edgar Allan Poe and the story is Tell Tale Heart. Of course, no, no, you no, have. no. I I mean about the writer and their uh, background and these things mm, not really no but if you if you know something you, because sometimes it helps because you see writers write in reality because they reflect their own life because edgar Allan poe had suffered from his own real life and his miserable and his psycho his psychology and psychoanalysis and the problems in relation to his uh, wife and to his mother and all this really affected his life okay because so we when we answer in the exam we can write about the author and compare oh yeah the oh, story. Oh, oh yes absolutely okay. yes yes absolutely because this will help us this will help us understand because this will give you more and more ideas about the understandings of the story because Edgar Allan Poe, as they say, in real life, had himself and his family a psychological problem. And this is, this is reflected in his writings. 
Okay? And the story, as you can see, is called Telltale Heart. And here the narrator and speaker and character is talking to us here in this story. True, nervous, very, very dreadful nervous, I had been and am. Notice, you know, the, the, you know, the really strong language here and the absolute, you know, perfectness and exactness. And he's saying to you, absolutely true. No way. No question about it. I was nervous and I was, again, he's repeating, very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am. <laughs> you see? had been from the past and now when you know he's telling us the story i mean this is a very strong uh, direct and brief absolutely direct and brief um, and compact language isn't it absolutely it's it's like uh, close to our friend uh, uh, ernest hemingway in this you know absolutely condensed language so he's here he's he's saying to us don't ever question me i am nervous now and i have been nervous for for a long time but why will you say that i am mad <laughs> who's this who's you why will you say who's you Basmala? Yes? Who is you here? Why will you? I told you that before about when we see the word you, it means who? Maybe the I reader? Yeah, 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 the reader. The readers, the, yeah, the readers of Oman here, our students, us he's saying hey reader anybody who reads this don't think that i am mad i am not he said why will you say that i am mad as if to say you know this story is going to be repeated and repeated and repeated like in a psychological therapy you know psychological therapy like you have a psychological problem and you are being under treatment and you are being under treatment all the time and all the time and people will say to you say this and say it and again and again and again and by this you will be relaxed a little bit so here the story to him to us is like this psychological really rehearsal or cycle by saying it again and again and again you say why do you think i'm mad why do you say to me that i'm mad the disease had sharpened my senses you know now he's telling us about his disease he said sharpened sharpened my senses and this is what i mean about the extreme sensitivity uh, remember this is the narrator the narrator who killed his neighbor the narrator character is not is not Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is not a criminal. But you see, the, the ideas are absolutely borrowed, and Edgar Allan Poe is reflecting his own his own sensitivity. And that's what I said here. He has a so as he said, disease. As if he said, I have I have a psychological problem, please understand me i have a disease which is called oversensitivity and he said my disease made me oversensitive and he said not destroyed not dulled them you know that my senses are not dead my senses are not destroyed they are very extreme above all was the sense of hearing acute again here he's saying Again, I have extreme sense of hearing. You know that? People sometimes say this, that 
uh, they, for example, sometimes they say they have extreme, extreme sense because we have five senses in our, in reality, correct? And here the idea that he, he, he's, he's saying, I, I am sensitive in all my senses, especially hearing, he said. My hearing are acute, means very, very sharp. I heard, I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. <laughs> I think this is crazy, isn't it? I heard all things in the heaven and in earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. Ha, huh. ladies and gentlemen, suppose I gave you this in the exam and I say comment. Boys, Hamza. I know Hamza today is angry because of his uh, screen, of his camera. Where is he? Hamza Ton, where are you? Yes, Doctor, I'm here. Yeah. What do you say about this? Could you please repeat? <laughs> I'm saying, if I gave you this first paragraph for commentary in the exam, I say discuss or, um, uh, you know, analyze or comment on this passage. What would you say? Well, I think uh, you can't uh, you can't kill uh, uh, anybody for your sake. Like he he's, I think uh, he kill him because he think his uh, his eagle eyes is uh, devilish. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, he when you look at when you yeah when you look at the at the lines, uh, what what did I tell you before? I told you when you see the quotation. You have to comment on the language, you have to comment on the narrator, and you have to say here the narrator and character, and the man here is asking us and begging us to believe him that he is not mad. And he's saying, why do you think I'm mad? I'm not really mad. I'm not mad, but I have an extreme sense of hearing. I have sharp senses of hearing. And maybe you can call this disease, but it's not maybe a disease. Maybe you call it a disease, I don't know, but he said, I'm not, I'm not really, you know, sick in that sense, but I'm extremely, extremely, extremely sensitive. And, and that's what he said, the cute hearing, hearing acute. Again, he said, the exaggeration, of course, he, I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. Isn't it? This is unbelievable. This is amazing to say, you know, the over exaggeration, the absolute exaggeration, the unbelievable exaggeration to say that I can hear all things in the heaven and in the earth. And he said, I heard many things in hell. What? When? When? You see, here you should say the exaggeration. Uh, you say the writer here is using a lot of exaggeration to draw our attention to his short story. Remember, this is the first few lines. The first two lines of the story, he wants to draw our attention strongly to read the story, to see what does he mean by this? How can he hear things in hell? I can hear, I heard many things in hell. I heard, you know, as if to say, you know, in the past, I, I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? So he's asking us to say, why are we saying about him that he's mad? So here you can say the narrator is directly, the speaker, character, narrator, is directly talking to us readers. And he is asking us to listen to him and to understand him. He's inviting us to his own action. He's inviting us to come with him into his story. And we are real people. We can't go to him and we can't forgive him. We can't really uh, listen to him, if you like, here and accept him. He wants to say, why, how then am I mad? 
كيف لي أن أكون مجنونا وكيف لك أن تصدق بأنني مجنون you know so really the idea here he is trying to tell us hey I'm okay I'm not mad why do you say I'm mad because I killed my neighbor but let me tell you why so this is again it's like being in a trial you know trial like in a trial and in front of the judge and in front of the people and you are defending yourself you are a criminal and because he is a criminal and he's defending himself in a court to say i'm not mad i'm not mad i'm over 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 sensitive so why do you say why do you tell me that i'm mad and he said listen to me i will tell you how can how can means listen listen and observe how healthy means look at me i look very healthy and i will tell you very clearly with full mind i know that i'm i'm not i can tell you exactly what was going on so he's saying don't think that i'm mad i want you to understand me and to forgive me to to forgive me and again he said how calmly i can tell you the whole story ah so he's saying please don't think that i'm crazy please don't think that i'm mad please understand me and please forgive me and the, you know he's saying i have a problem i have a psychological problem and you have you must understand me and you must forgive me because if you listen to my excuses then you will say you shall say oh well, okay yeah maybe he's he's having a, a problem maybe we should understand him so really this first story this first section here is an invitation direct invitation to the reader which is really very funny normally in fiction we don't ask readers to come into our action we can't bring real readers to to join us into the story and to say come with me and let me tell you as if to say he's telling us a real life story is not fiction but it's reality of course here the writer wants to you know draw our attention to this idea about you know he's telling the truth and so on um i will stop here and i will continue from there um next time because i think um, now it's too uh, too late i will um uh, i will stop here if you have any question please ask